Hello everyone. My name is Sunny Patwari. I'm SAP Technical Alliance Lead for North America. I'm here with Srinath Midi. Srinath, do you want to introduce yourself? Sure. Thank you, Sunny. Hello everyone. My name is Srinath Midi. I'm a Principal Partner Solution Architect with SAP Focus at AWS. I'm very excited to be here with you along with Sunny. Thank you, Srinath. So, as customers embark on their journey for SAP on AWS, they are needing that disaster recovery pattern and, and different scenarios they can adopt, right? SAP is a critical workload for them, and they want to understand different disaster recovery strategies and patterns. Srinath, can you help us defining or helping us illustrate different disaster recovery patterns? Absolutely. It is a very important discussion that uh, we at AWS will always have with our customers and partners. As many of you know, <clears throat> there are more than 5,000 SAP customers that are running on AWS. I would like to start defining the RPO, RTO, and then uh, compare and contrast in all the three patterns that are uh, drawn on the board here. Thank you, Srinath. So first I want to start with RPO, which is, called, which is defined as recovery point objective. Recovery point objective is the maximum amount of data loss that a business can tolerate in an unplanned, unexpected event. And the second one is recovery time objective. Recovery time objective is defined as the maximum amount of time that a business unit can accept if their IT systems are down or if their critical business systems are down. So these two are the important parameters that will help you to choose the right pattern and navigate through various patterns that are available so that you can always work backwards from your customer requirements. So the key design principle here is like, we at AWS always start with asking questions to our customers to understand their business continuity requirements, which start with recovery point objective, recovery time objective. Once we identify them, then it will be, it will be super easy to identify the pattern that works for the customers. With that, I want to start with uh, passive DR. Passive DR is a pattern where your systems are running in region one, okay. and your disaster recovery strategy is going to rely on the backup restore methodology. So all the systems that you are running in your first region, whether is it Amazon EC2 instances, whether, whether it, if it is related to your databases, you back them up using the database native tools or any of the custom tools whichever you are using for your uh, backup strategy, okay. you send all those backups to Amazon S3 bucket. Amazon S3 is like our object-based storage which gives you 12 nines of durability. Once you send your backups to Amazon S3, from there you can replicate them into the region of your choice. For example, as shown here, I'm sending them to my region two. Uh, all the backups that are there in S3 are accessible here. And also I use Amazon Machine Images, which is our native service to take the backup of your Amazon EC2 instances. So okay. once you replicate these onto second region, then you can uh, restore them. Again, uh, for restoring, you can use series of uh, tools, methodologies like automate them, and then achieve or reduce your recovery time objective. But otherwise, primarily, it's relying on your backup and restore method. Now, coming back to your recovery point objective, in this uh, pattern, your recovery point objective is going to be in hours. Okay. While recovery time objective is also going to be in hours. The specific number is going to depend on the size of your workload, how frequently you are backing up, how frequently you are taking your log backups, etc. And also your recovery time is going to heavily dependent on are you going to do this manually or you know, are you going to use automations available. Yeah. And ju just to remind everyone watching this video, there are various automation tools that are available uh, on AWS that you can use when you are launching these tools. And the most important uh, factor for many customers is like the cost. In this pattern, your cost is going to be the lowest. Okay, got it. So technically, depending on the customer requirement and RPO and RTO will derive the cost. So if got it. If you have, uh, if you are okay to, to, to have higher RPO and RTO, your cost will be minimal. Still here, they can use automation tools to, 
to reduce their uh, RTO numbers. Like they can, uh, they can use automation scripts for launching AMI to instances. Absolutely, you got it. Thank you, Srinath. What about pilot light DR? How this differs from the backup restore methodology? Sure. The second pattern uh, that I have pre-drawn here is the pilot light DR. In this method, you will identify the critical components for your uh, application. If it is an SAP application, database is where your customer data is going to reside on. And it's very important that you do not lose any data in, in any unplanned, unexpected events, okay? Right. So in this method, you have your systems running in region one, and your region two will have compute instance for the critical application or critical component that you have identified. In this case, your database has a lightweight instance running in the second region. Okay. And you are replicating the changes in the primary instance to secondary database constantly. Okay. That will help you to reduce your recovery point objective, like the maximum amount of data loss that you can accept from hours to minutes. Got it. Okay. So, and, and how you achieve this is by using the database native replication method that you are using. And when it comes to the app layer, again, you depending on your uh, objective, you can either use Amazon machine images or you can use other methods like our, our services like uh, Elastic Disaster Recovery or the others to constantly replicate data from your app layer to the second region. Got it, okay. And this will help you to reduce your RTO from hours to, again, depending on how you are going to plan and others, you, it, you can have a few hours of RTO. Again, it depends on the Size. recovery okay. and, and the automation you are using. And when it comes to the cost, cost is going to be slightly more than your uh, uh, passive DR. And the reason for that is, you are consuming compute and storage compared to the first pattern. Got it. So if I try to compare these two scenarios, let's say for SAP workloads running on HANA, here you are saving the complete HANA compute cost because you're not running any instances here uh, in, in backup restore methodology. In pilot light, you will use a smaller size HANA instance to, to replicate data from your primary to secondary. So you are saving cost on your instance size and when there is uh, an unplanned event, you can scale this to your actual HANA instance size. This is great. This helps to give customer flexibility around cost and RPO and RTO. Thank you, Srinath. How about warm and hot standby? What kind of customers or what is the use cases where customers can use warm and hot, hot standby? Got it. Yeah, sure. Uh, there are customers that, that would like to achieve uh, the lowest possible RPO to support their uh, business okay. requirements. So. For them, warm or hot standby is going to be the pa right pattern for them. So if you look at the components, the database is like for like. So your uh, region one and region two are going to be like for like and uh, constantly replicated so that any changes that's happening in your primary region are going to be replicated into your right. secondary region. When it comes to the app layer, in warm standby DR, if you have 10 app servers, you can go with two or three app servers and then save on the active compute. But if you want to really match like for like and then protect you against any possible RTO or RPO, that's where you can rely on uh, hot standby where you are matching up everything from the app layer as well. Okay. And in this approach, the RPO is going to be seconds. and your RTO is going to be minutes, and your cost is going to be more than the other two. more than the other two patterns that we discussed. Thank you, Srinath. This really helps. So that means if a customer needs almost um, in seconds RPO or in minutes RTO, they're okay to, to have a higher cost, they can use warm or hot standby, but still here there is a lot of flexibility depending on their need on the application layer. They can save cost by uh, running less number of app servers, or they can go hot standby with same number of app servers. Absolutely. Right? Thank you, Srinath. I think this really helps. This is a fine equilibrium of 
RPO, RTO, and cost, and it gives a lot of different options and flexibility for customers to run SAP on AWS disaster recovery patterns on, on AWS. Thank you, Srinath. Uh, it was really great having you. It was great, uh, great conversation. Um, thank you for watching this video. Please uh, reach out if you have any questions. Uh, thank you so much. Have a great day.